still goes into the oh my god god usually this guy type stuff uh, so <laughs> slow down okay hello i am julia bushkova and today's topic is up bow staccato on the violin a bow staccato is a bowing not to be confused with articulation staccato and to help me today are four of my wonderful students and I will introduce them right now. On my left there is Karim and Emma and on my right Kelly and Marlon. So these four will be indispensable in our journey through staccato. There are two ways staccato can sound and one way uh, primarily is when staccato is on the string and it doesn't go off the string and it sounds like this or of that nature and the other way is when the staccato does come off the string and sounds more like this so this last one is called flying staccato uh, and today I'm not going to be addressing any of the flying staccato at all it will be only the re regular staccato that we do most of the time which is staccato on the string now, staccato on the string is done by two main techniques, okay? So one of these techniques, again, the one that we will demonstrate first, will be a controlled staccato. The controlled staccato is trained from slower tempo to faster tempo to faster tempo in their series of exercises that we will be showing you today. Uh, the other type is called the tight arm staccato. And the tight arm staccato we will discuss when we get to it. All right, so now we will talk about the control staccato. Control staccato is performed primarily by the index finger in the hand. Uh, of course, it is not the only thing that is working. We are still moving the bow in this way since we're talking about the up bow staccato primarily. Uh, when you practice staccato, you are more than welcome to practice both directions, which is up bow and then the down bow. But the movement is very different. In that way, as I will be demonstrating to you today, and the system that I will be sharing with you today uh, is more attuned to the up bow staccato than down bow staccato. I will address this whole issue in the other video, actually. But oh, right now we will go to the up bow staccato. And to start, it is very important that this muscle here, right there, is quite well developed and you can also isolate the movement of index finger from all the other fingers okay to do that we would put the bow first in the middle of the bow it could be right now i'm on d string so it could be on d string and i would depress the bow exclusively with the index finger just like that so for you to see now more i will remove these fingers and let them hang behind the bow very loosely and then again do this okay so i depress i make sure that the wood of the uh, the stick of the bow goes completely to the hair so it's that muscle that we're looking at so as you can see the movement of the index finger is pretty much this it sort of goes just to the side but here it will be in the air it will look like that on the bow it looks just like as you saw it right now anyway so that is to strengthen that muscle and to make sure it is independent from other fingers then we will put the bow a little bit higher higher than the middle of the bow and let's say i will go on the a string right now and i will do the same thing only fast now so the bow will be kind of kind of trying to bite the hair the stick is biting the hair okay so that's number two little exercise number three now we will make a little bit of movement with this and it could be very crunchy movement actually so that will be our what i call bite and to be that crunchy can be so you can see that i 
almost don't move the bow at all. Okay, so if I move the bow a little bit and maybe press a little bit less, I will actually start getting sound. So at this point, I really don't feel that I'm moving the arm because the movement is so slow. So all I feel is as if I'm doing it only in my hand. But meanwhile, of course, the arm is the one that progresses my bow little by little, wouldn't you say? Yes? Okay. <laughs> all right. So now I will ask Kelly to show us some less crunchy bites and also very slow tempo, 40. But if it's a little bit faster, it's okay, but just slow. So we have big breaks between the bites. Okay, good. Can you now lose a little bit less bow? So a little bit less advancement of bow. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes, very, no very nice. So these bites are gentle bites, mm -hmm. but they're still bites. So I can see that she's doing the movement very correctly, okay? So then, once we get the bite feel, now we can add an echo to the bite. And so the echo is the very, very light movement. You kind of do it sort of like you do the bite, but without any effort whatsoever. And then this is echo. So the bite is, and the echo is this. If on the bite the bow moves very little, on the echo it almost doesn't move at all. Okay, do you think you can show me that one? And a little bit more bite, a little bit more. Yeah, but not more bow, less bow. Okay. Correct, very nice, okay. So at this point, for the sake of time, we're just doing like six of them or three bites and three echoes. But in reality, when you practice this, I highly recommend that you will take a metronome of 40 and 40 is your, um, let's call it quarter note. And so each bite at first will be uh, just on the metronome. So forth. I would do, I would do probably eight of them. So you don't get crazy. Eight is good because it's very slow. Then you return to your starting point. And then in the same tempo, you will add the bite and echo. And so forth. I, again, I'm not doing all eight right now for the sake of time. So then the fun part starts. So after adding one bite, we will add the second one to the same beat and it will be, become a triplet. Right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to try, do it or are you okay? Oh, I can try. Okay, try it. And so forth. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. We do need to watch one thing. You know, when we do those bites and everything, a lot of times the bow wants to go to the bridge. It really does. So we need to watch that we don't allow it to go to the bridge. I believe it happens a lot of times when we play with a tilt and our fingers are actually pushing the bow here a little bit, you know, because they participate. So yes, it's important to keep it at one point so it doesn't go to the bridge. A sound will be worse, obviously, if we go there. Okay, so now third echo joins the bite and becomes and so forth, okay? So here will you. And so forth, you do your eight bites like this with three echoes down and now we double the bites exactly in the same tempo. So we double them and they become. And so on. 
Let's do it in this tempo. Now this tempo will be approximately actually now 80 because we doubled the bytes, we were in 40, now we're going to 80. Dum, bum, 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 bum. Correct. So those are our bytes now doubled in 80. In my, um, in my experience, almost anybody who starts doing staccato is able to double the bytes and go to 80 at the very first day. If it doesn't happen the first day, it will happen on day number three for sure. <laughs> you just have to practice it a little bit, right? Okay, so that's not the problem. Now, it's more challenging when we go faster. So here's at 80, and we now proceed with the same idea, which is two echoes per byte. You do it several times, then you do three echoes per byte. Okay, and now you double the bytes. <laughs> so let me show the double and you will take off over after this, okay? So now with doubling the bytes, those of us who are good in math know that our tempo now became 160 per byte, correct? So now this is our tempo of the bytes. Okay, and now we need to add a triplet to make a triplet into this tempo. Now Kelly, <laughs> can you show us triplets? Very nice. Yes, those are the triplets 260. So now if we translate uh, this tempo of her movements in duplets, the tempo will be closer to one over 140, which is a very fast tempo. So this is a very good tempo to, pay, to play like Hora Staccato by Diniko Heifetz or any other things that you want to show off or Caprices by Paganini. Uh, this is a very good tempo already. So if you want to train faster, of course you can, and then I would recommend to go to a slower tempo and uh, from that train yet another exercise. Um, so the other exercises, uh, for the staccato can be what we call doubling, I guess, double. So this type of exercise is immediately gives you a little bit of only bite, not as big of the bite as I was doing in the previous one. Uh, both movements are rather light and as fast as your hand will do this. So there, and then we wait, right? Then you can do triple. Again, it's all about tiny motion here. More on this particular exercise uh, is in the video of my colleague E.L. Kless, and we will reference it here, and perhaps also in description. Anyway, you will find it. He gives a really detailed explanation of this particular uh, exercise for staccato. All right, so this is our controlled staccato. Now we are going to the tight arm staccato. Uh, for the tight arm, I will have Emma here, and for a reason. So first, what is tight arm staccato? Literally, it is some staccato movement that we don't do with anything uh, pretty much in our hand, but we do it by tightening something in our arm. So for most people, including myself, when I was try first trying to do it, my teacher said, okay, take the ball, kind of firmly, put the ball on the string above the middle, in the upper part, work really press into the string, again, through the first finger, of course, index finger always, because as you know, we're turned that way. Okay, and then tighten your upper arm and go really slowly, you know, so you would, we hope, get sound sort of like this. Okay, well in my case of course it didn't happen actually, when I tried to do this it was 
that's all I could do. It's because I didn't have any muscle in my upper arm, as it turned out, which I had to build. So yes, there has been, or was rather, I hope it was, a misconception among violin professionals that if you cannot succeed from the very first try of the tight arm staccato, it means that you don't have it and you can never have it and it's just because you were not born with that. Well, I am the living example that that is completely false and there are many other people who are living examples of that as well. So it's perfectly trainable. What exactly gets tightened? You really don't need to care. <laughs> You're just trying your best to do something here. Uh, for some people it's just a bicep, but most people I think it probably built both bicep bicep and tricep because they work together and then uh, for some people it also the forearm will well, the forearm actually will be involved anyway but to what extent it differs from, differs from person to person don't think about this just do it okay so now Emma here has never done the tight arm staccato she has a very nice control staccato which she has developed through a series of exercises correct but we already did this with Kelly and right now we will teach Emma to do the tight arm staccato. Okay, Emma, here. Let's see. So yes, you put the bow on the string above the middle somewhere, yes, in a comfortable place, and then you kind of dig into this, and you tighten what you have in here, and you go very slowly. So the bow goes slowly, and you kind of press into the string. Exactly, and then you can go the, the return again, and just kind of feel it. You can do it several times. Very nice. Okay, so now let's try something else. You put the bow here and now go the same way. So you again tighten here and press into the string enough so that you have resistance there and go down bow. You know, because this thing really doesn't matter where you go up bow or down bow staccato. Exactly. Do you see what I mean? It yeah. doesn't really matter which way you go. So in, in Emma's case, what you really need to do a little bit uh, better, first of all, obviously she has it. She has it right there, so it means that Emma has enough muscle right there where it needed. Second, yes. Secondly, just go a little bit slower. So if we go, if I go a little bit faster, it's less uh, articulated. So if I go a little bit slower or here, you know, it becomes more articulation. So it's, 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 uh, the tightness plus pressure plus very slow bow. You try to try try to do it. Okay, how does it feel? Tight. <laughs> you know, and here it goes. Tight. Okay, do you care to do it one more time to try it? Sure. Let's do it on up bow, but not too not too close. Yeah, somewhere in a comfortable range. Okay? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it is very fast at this point when Elma is doing it. It's a little bit not as articulated as it will be. But what you have to do is just to practice it, um, you know, one minute per day, because it's true, it's tight, and therefore you don't want to over, uh, overdo it right away. I had to do it, as I said, from scratch, like it wasn't even happening at all. So I was getting really tired, and I would be maybe doing it for like, you know, up to three minutes a day, uh, breaking the minutes, and then it starts happening. So I actually got your result probably in about maybe two or three weeks. When I was actually using this type of staccato, which was when I was playing Vinyavsky Concerto number one, and it's indicated as a double staccato there, you know, two times each note, so by that time, of course, it was very articulated and uh, spaced out. Um, now, one thing to know that, that this type of staccato, the tight arm, it's not controlled. So it will happen in the tempo in which this person's body will do this movement. So basically, it's a shake. You tighten the muscle and you see this part shakes. That's your staccato. That's what, all it is to it. So if you go one tempo, you can be faster than somebody else. I, right now, showing the staccato, it will be most likely slower than the staccato, tight arm staccato of my students, because I'm much older. When we get older, that type of staccato slows down. Just like, you know, vibrato tends to slow down, staccato tends to slow down, to what degree is very different from person to person, but in general, yes, we uh, become more spaced out as uh, we grow older. So, basically, this is all about training the tight arm staccato and improving it. Several minutes every day, 
goes very long way, you will achieve a very good result. And now we will look at the different types of the tight arm staccato, different speeds, and I will have all of my students come over here and join me for that. Okay, so here we are, all together again. And let's see, start with Karim, and Karim will show us the tight arm staccato. So Karim, what are you going to tighten? Which part? Forearm, bicep, and tricep. Okay. I think. Everything possible. Okay. Okay, well, that's pretty good. Can you do the same thing, try to do the same thing on a down bow and see? Yeah, that's the beauty of this kind of staccato, is that it's, it actually works the same way, both ways, and sometimes even better on the down bow, even though we're talking about up bow staccato, but this one doesn't matter. Next, okay, Emma, do you want to do anything with that newly acquired staccato or not? Maybe third time will be the charm. Okay, <laughs> now let's try it. Without notes probably at this point yet, no right? Just, just on the open string or maybe some finger, one finger. Well, it's there. Try that down bow. Yeah, and you will find that you will have some parts of the bow in which it is better. Mm -hmm. So that for that reason, I would uh, say go to those parts first and kind of uh, uh, perfect your feel in those parts of the bow. Then you will expand into the other parts of the bow. The same, by the way, uh, also applies to the control staccato. Usually control staccato, something that I did not say at the first part of the video, we will start uh, above the uh, middle, well above the middle, and go to the middle, a little bit past the middle, and then back. At first it will be just here, usually right there. There is a breaking point, as I call it, for the control staccato, which in this one doesn't happen at all. It really doesn't matter where you are in the bow, um, in the tight arm. But in that one, there is a breaking point, and we little by little extend uh, our, or expand our movement and uh, get m the whole bow, hopefully, with the other one. Okay, Kelly, what about your tight arm staccato? Let's see what you want to demonstrate. And then, ta da dum bum pa right? Okay, what about there? Okay, do we do this? Yes, and as you will progress the, uh, in the bow, you will press less, okay? But anyway, so this is our master class on Hora Staccato, we don't do. Wait, I can try Paganini Yeah, sure. Try not to fold also, stay. Mm -hmm. So, it's, by the way, it very much helps, um, very helpful when your arm, when you go to lower strings, that's about string crossings, we didn't talk about string crossings really, but uh, that the arm goes above or leads the, the elbow, okay, so not staying below, it doesn't help at all. Yeah, so that's for you, it's very important not to fold by the end here, because then actually your arm is low and you're here, you see, mm -hmm. so yeah, that will be helpful. By the end of the chord, uh, release a little bit and then bite again into the, into the string. Exactly. Okay, so that's, that was a little bit less pressure altogether, right? Okay, so, very nice. Now, let's go to Marlon, last but not the least. Mm -hmm. Okay, very nice. So, what I would like you to do right now, I would like you to move your sleeve a little bit up so we can see your wrist because that will be important actually in Marlon's case. Okay, one more time. Exactly. So the reason I asked Marlon to free up or show his wrist actually is that Marlon is one of the rare people, but they do exist, who don't, <laughs> who don't tighten this part of the arm, but actually tightens the wrist, correct? Is that Marlon? I do feel the tension mostly in my wrist rather than normally in my forearm. Exactly, yes, and a very good result. So this type of staccato, we should probably call tight wrist staccato, but 
Nevertheless, it still goes into the category of the tight arm staccato because he tightens something and it's not controlled. Once you start, it's the same, right? It just will go at that speed, at certain speed. Um, but yeah, it, fewer people have it. However, those who have it can go also in different tempi, and I believe the same thing happens. So the tempo will be, th this tempo will be for Marlon. Somebody else can have slightly faster or slightly slower tempo of the staccato, just like with the other types of staccato, of tight arm staccato. <laughs> and so forth. Ha, 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 ha.